Hello everyone, my name is Phil. I work at the Technical Support Department at Infinity Innovations. And today we're going to go through hand shoe inverters and batteries, how to pair them, how to set them up. But first I want to give you some guidance on how to find some of the information if you're on site and how to actually get around the system. So the first thing I'm going to show you is if you go into your menu at the bottom of the screen, you will have what is called a data center. And this is where they store all the information like your user manuals and stuff for your batteries. Now you can see we've only got on there at the moment a 3.2 battery, you could have a 9.4, no problem. We click product list and it gives you a full array of all the batteries for this low voltage system. So you have your 9.4, uh, your 3.2 uh, and the new battery that's due to come out shortly which is the 5.1. All the information is there, user manuals, quick installation guides, and even how to actually connect to your battery loggers and all the QR codes should you need them. If you're fitting high voltage, again, we have a full array of batteries there. The 2.7s at the top, the 5.3s at the bottom. This will be added on to later on in the year with a 9.4. We also have the single phase inverters. Again, quick installation guides, user manuals, and also the three fares. Going back to the main screen here on your menu page, we have a quick guide as well. And this quick guide basically guides you through how to set up a station um, and also how to input all the details correctly. Click save. And then it asks, do you want to continue adding devices? Yes, you do. So it automatically searches for the device. You'll notice in the top corner here, that there is um, a phone with a Wi-Fi signal. This is so you can load the Wi-Fi uh, information if you haven't already got it on your phone. Again, 15 different pages to look at and they're very, very useful to help you on site. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a device. I've already created the station. Now you can see automatically um, the inverter and the battery has already found itself. Now, all I need to do is make sure um, I'm connected to the correct Wi-Fi. Now, to do that, I'm just going to pause the video and I'll rejoin you in a second. Okay, we're back. Uh, I've now put in the Wi-Fi information that I need. I'm going to click confirm. And now you can see, you can actually select or deselect whichever device you want to connect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to click add. And now this is where it will run through the process of showing you if it's getting the devices online. It will give you a, a complete um, tick to say, yes, it's there. If there is any errors and it's failed for whatever reason, you will get a red X. All that we have to do with that is just repeat the process and it should pair itself quite quickly. Now we've uh, actually paired the devices to the station, you'll notice at the bottom in the blue bar that states configure the inverter or inverters if you've got more than one. So we click that uh, and it takes us to um, a local setting for the inverter. Now this cannot be done unless you are within 10 meters of the inverter. So what we will do is press this on the inverter. It then reads the data that's currently saved on this inverter. So this is where we can change some of the information like the, uh, the grid settings, if it's a 3.68 um, to a G98. Um, we can power it on and off. Um, we can request zero export. We can even clear the Wi-Fi. So if you want to unbind this uh, device and repair it to um, another router or you're changing location and taking it with you, that's how you would do that. Energy, in the energy settings, again, this is where we would change the working modes. So you have four currently. The normal one would be self-consumption mode where you've got PV uh, and things like that. At the moment, this is a test one, so we just use it on backup energy. Uh, but you can also set it on things like based on time, and you can even have it off-grid. Really, really easy to set that up. You can even activate your weather optimizer on there. So it will give you... Um, a full breakdown of what kind of weather is being reported. So for instance, on this one here, it preset to mostly clouds, is 75% SLC charge level from the grid. 
but we'll charge your batteries up 75% and then allow the other 25% to come from your solar. So again, really useful to have. Um, and there's also Oxbus charging. And again, it's preset on there. Uh, your charge times are from midnight till eight, which is your uh, nighttime tariff. And then your daytime tariff is from lunchtime 12 until seven o'clock at night. And it's currently set to four and two charge points. So we'll pick the four cheapest during the night to charge for the half hour slot. Um, and then it will stop at eight o'clock, allow the system to work as normal. And then between two and 7 p.m. in the evening, it will pick another two cheap slots to charge for half hour periods. You can actually go onto this and view the records um, and it'll give you all the information you need and it'll even show you all the, the charge points that are necessary or whether it's been successful or not. As you can see, we've had one failed one there and that's because, like I said, this is a test unit and we've been doing things with it. Um, what this also has is it will actually give you the option of which of these two you would like to prioritize. So if there's a conflict with either one, where one of them is saying to the other one, no, I'm taking charge, you're not, um, you can say, for this one, for instance, we're saying we want Octopus as the preferred priority. So Octopus will always take the charge. Okay, so we'll come out of this. Now a really useful tip for um, your installation teams is you'll notice at the top of the menu, charge and discharge test. Again, can only be done on a local setting. We we'll click on that and it brings you to a menu. Once you've fully installed the actual system um, and you've got it paired to an, a station, what you can now do is click start on your charge time and what it will do is charge the battery for a period of one minute. And it will show you if there's anything wrong with the battery. So in other words, if, if it's not allowing any charge to come in, um, you'll notice here at the moment, this one I've currently got on idle. Um, so it's not putting any charge into the battery. You now know that there's an issue with the battery um, or it's currently full SLC, so it won't take anything anyway. I'll just show you how we do this. So let me just change something quickly on the battery and we will do a quick discharge test. There you go. So you now can see that it's actually discharging at 96.8. So if I just go onto my camera, you will see now the battery is currently discharging. If I go back onto my screen, it's giving you the same ampage reading as well. So if I stop that, then stops. We've now completed the, um, the setup of the inverter. I've just changed a few settings in the past um, in the background and click complete on the bottom from the previous video. Um, you'll notice now on the main section with your home screen, you'll have um, a complete overview of the inverter details, the battery charging. You can even see the power uh, being directed when it's working. Um, which will appear on the house above. So if it's charging, you'll see a green uh, line coming down. Um, I think you can actually see one there where the battery is currently discharging into the inverter and supplying the load. Um, so it's really, really cool. Um, there is an analysis for the inverter. It does give you the information you need, the statistics. It even does do the revenue, um, but this is only used at the moment for people that are on a fixed tariff. Um, so if you've got a fixed, buying tariff and a fixed export, it's really, really good to track um, how much the um, system is actually generating for you in revenue if you're actually exporting quite a lot of power. Um, what we are planning to do is the Octopus settings will be automatically uploaded to the revenue when you activate the Octopus. So every time you're buying something, it will update it to say this is what your buying price was back to come up in time. And more so when you're actually exporting as well, the price that you're exporting at that particular moment in time will be reflected against your revenue. So that will be coming. Going into your device settings, um, again, you've got an inverter and a battery at the top. So this will give you live data um, coming from the actual inverter. Um, I believe it updates itself every 15 seconds um, and actually records the data to the server every one minute. So it's very, very fast with its response and it's very accurate in how it actually gives you the data as well. There is, again, you've got the history um, you've got the statistics, so if you want that data and you, and you look at things like that, that's great. 
and you'll notice at the bottom of the screen as well you've also got the remote control so if you do need to go and change any of the settings just click that and you can go back into the inverter settings and start changing working modes and things like that um, going into the battery uh, the battery will give you again basic information and uh, tells you the SOC what it's currently working at again the history data like it does with the inverter, uh, inverter side and also the statistics again there is a remote control feature at the bottom um, you will be limited to what you can and can't do with this so oh, I've got a network issue so I can't show you that at the moment unfortunately um, but that is a complete overview um, I hope you like the uh, the layout and how easy it is to actually install and see all the information uh, especially the commission tools that you've got for the charge and discharge thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon